Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Profit Talk. Tonight we're gonna. <laughs> Tonight is all about sourcing. Um, how we source, where we source, the kind of products that we source, how we source differently for eBay and Amazon and whatever other platform, um, and how our sourcing has changed from when we first got started, like from the noob stage till now. Um, do you want to start, Deb, with with yours and how it's changed and or well, just start with your sourcing. How do you source? I'm a Goodwill sourcer. Uh, 95% of my stuff comes from Goodwill. In Austin, we have like 25 Goodwills in Austin. So, like, I could literally go sourcing every day at Goodwill and, like, only hit, you know, wouldn't hit them all in a two week period. So, uh, yeah, most of my stuff comes from Goodwill. I don't like running around to a lot of different stores. I don't like garage selling. Or I'm never going to be like that retail arbitrage person that runs around to 15 places. And this is like Paul was trying to say the other day. And like, <laughs> yeah, you will when you find. No, I won't. I won't. I just won't. <laughs> like, he's like, I was thinking about you in Target today. I was like, Deb would so not be doing this. <laughs> no, I won't. I'm not going to go. I just won't. Like, I've seen people post, like, these things and say, like, go to the store and get this and go right now. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, no, I don't wanna. You know, and I don't. So yeah, yeah I idea. source my stuff from Goodwill and all the most of the things that I send to Amazon um, are thrifted. I do pick up stuff if I'm inside of a store and I check out the clearance. So I mm -hmm. do have some stuff that I've gotten from the clearance section at the grocery store, but I'm like already there. I didn't go there with the intentions of sourcing anything. I just make sure to check it out because I'm already there. Do you write your mileage off if you pick something up? I do too. Yes, I do. Because that's a lot of money. Telling you guys, this year, 57 and a half cents, the Fed's up the mileage for business purposes. That's all I'm going to say. A, it's a ton of money. I'm up to like 280 miles for the month of January, which is like $160 or something. It's like ridiculous amounts of money, guys. So what has changed for you sourcing-wise from when you first started? Okay, so when I first started, I made the mistakes of not thinking about, okay, here's what you do with your Etsy store. Because I see people come home with stuff, and then they get on Facebook, and they go, what is this? And I'm like, why did you buy it? You know, <laughs> because they, it, so what, what I learned, and this is something I had to do to myself, was when I was at the store, if I couldn't come up with at least, like, five keywords for it, I didn't need to buy it because that meant it was going to sit at my house and then when I went to go try to list it, I was going to go, I don't know what this is, I don't know how to keyword it, I don't know how to title it, I don't know how to describe it, and then I would sit it somewhere else. On the back and of yourself. Come back. Right. So I decided at one point after I'd been sourcing for a while, you know, maybe about like six months or a year because I spent the first eight months that I was in business kind of in a paralyzed mode. Because I had read all of these things about how you were supposed to title stuff and how you were supposed to describe stuff, and then I got paralyzed. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, if I can't take the pictures right and I can't describe it right, then I'm not going to sell it. And so I have to do it a certain way, and then I wasn't doing it at all. And so I, that's how I ended up, like, hoarding stuff. And you said that your big clean out, how much of that was the stuff that you got when you first started? A lot of it. Like yesterday I cleaned out my shed and a good portion of what ended up on the curb yesterday were coffee cups and like porcelain canister sets that I never even thought about. Like how was I going to ship those where they didn't break and clank against each other, you know, and um, just things that I didn't want to deal with and I was, um, so yeah, they went out onto the curb yesterday. I have some things that I ditched. Um because it was just like, I don't even want to look at that again. So what the hell was I thinking? Yeah, I, you know, when I, I first it. started business, as, I don't know, you know, people that, that know me as a reseller know that I say I won't sell clothes. I hate clothes. Mm -hmm. I won't sell them. You can't make me. You can't pay me enough to do it. But when I started business, I was going to be like a big-time menswear clothes seller. I was going to be the rake in profits before rake in profits existed. 
<laughs> because that was like three years ago. <laughs> like, and then I went out and I sourced all these shirts, right? Because, you know, it's a treasure trove of clothing here. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just amazing, you know, clothes like all over the place. So if I wanted to go out every day and source clothes, I could. And so I did. And I came home with like 40 shirts. And I like ironed them. And then I like burnt myself. And I was like, why am I ironing this stuff? I don't even iron my own clothes. You know, I do, I do not iron our clothing, and I will sit there and steam a suit, you know, like a suit jacket or something. And and then you had to take all the pictures, and I was like, I hate this. Mm -hmm. I hate every part of this. And so I still had, like, shirts that I bought three years ago, like, in the closet, you know, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell those. Do so, but now, did the stuff that you that you put out there, you took a bunch and donated it for the write-off, correct? I, or did you I just did, throw it out? No, I, that stuff got thrown out. Um, I took stuff last week to donate. Okay. I took probably eight bags of stuff um, over to Savers, because if you donate at Savers, then you get a coupon. So, so they give a coupon and not a receipt? Oh, you get a receipt, too. There's a coupon attached to your receipt. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get a you get your write off receipt, and then you get a twenty percent off coupon, and you get a three dollars off a ten dollar purchase. Nice. We need a savers. I uh, take mine back to I. Well, I try to take mine to St. Vincent de Paul um, instead of Goodwill, but some things you know St. Vinny's can't take. So I take it to Goodwill. So yeah. So what's kind of changed with the way that I source is. Um, I don't source things. I, I take into consideration how difficult it's going to be to list. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started doing parts, I wasn't taking into consideration how long it was going to take me to clean something. Now I don't even pick up anything that's, like, really dirty. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't buy things, like, that I hate, that I'm just like, I'm going to hate listing this. You know, and... I, I, I'm fortunate because I have a huge selection around me. It would be harder if I only had one store or two stores. Like some people in their areas, they don't have as many stores. I, I might not be able to be as selective. Honestly, if I only had one store, I might not even have even started this business because I would have started with clothes and said, I hate clothes. I only have access to clothes and probably wouldn't even be doing eBay. When... When I first started, it was more the, the mindset that, well, I take that back. I, I've been selling on eBay, like, forever. Um, but it was mainly things that, you know, that we had that we didn't need anymore. Um, so it was, like, sourcing from my own house kind of thing just to get rid of stuff that I was like, I'm not donating that. I can make money off that. Um, and then I started selling on Amazon um, and it, but it started out with an Amazon store a few years ago. Um, I don't even remember. I meant to look that up because Dusty asked me about that today and I can't remember. But um, it was actually like two or three years ago. No, three or four years ago. Anyway, so I started out like with an Amazon store and uh, it was like, oh, well, you know, I can do the merchant fulfilled stuff. So I put a couple things on there and that was just... I like that sucked. I, I, I don't like Merchant Fulfilled on Amazon. But the things that I sourced then, you know, I was like looking for books and, you know, the things that I liked that I thought that people might like. And that, I got stuck in that for the longest time. You know, it was like, oh, I like that. Somebody's going to want that, you know, or, oh, <laughs> that looks cool. Somebody's going to want that, you I know. I think a lot of people have made that mistake that they source things that they like. Yes. And then... They're like, nobody else wants it but me. Yeah, half, the time, half the time I didn't even sell it because I was like, oh, I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you end up keeping it. You yeah. Know? And we wonder how my house just gets full of crap. But then it took on the more of the whole business sense. So I was, you know, and that was still mostly Amazon. So I never had the, um, the real starting on eBay, you know, sourcing for eBay thing because I was Amazon – and then started adding in eBay just because I felt like I should be because I saw so many things I could put on there. But I'm still like 90% Amazon and maybe 10% of my stuff is eBay. And that's like, you know, like um, 
So you're like the nice reverse of what I was last year. Yes. I was yeah, I'm like the exact opposite. Yeah. I'm the yeah. exact opposite of you. Um, and I don't think that I would go more. I could see myself maybe going 25% eBay on a bad Amazon sourcing month. Like, I can't right. see myself going even 50-50. Just, yeah, I thought about, you know, that my business might end up 50-50 by the end of the year, mm -hmm. but I just, I don't know because I'm so anti-retail art on, you know, just the whole process of it that mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't, because I have a level of, of how hard I want to work, you know, and I don't want to do that. You know, like, I don't want to run around all over the place and, and source things. That's why I had actually considered that, like, online arbitrage would probably end up the route that I go. Um, but we'll see. You know, I'm still only basically sending stuff from the thrift store to Amazon at this point, um, which it works for me. It's been working. Like, my sales for the month of January are just about to hit 2000 and, I mean, that's huge nice. compared to, like, yeah, like, that's a big number. I mean, that's a good month on eBay, you know, because I'm, I mean, I'm still part-time. I just, this month, was, like, forced into full-time, like, this is my only income. I have no other income. Right. You know, like, personally, like, my husband has his job, but that's, that's different. Mine... Um, I have nothing to do with the budget. Like, my income is nothing but to be rolled back into this. And that's that in and of itself has changed my sourcing, to be honest. Um, because yeah, I can do, I, you know, bigger things and I can do, you know, more volume if I want to do more volume. It's just I'm lazy. Well, see, I have expenses. Like, I have credit card debt, I have student loans, I have things that came before my husband ever even existed, you know, um, that I don't feel like he's responsible for paying for me, you know, right. he was there when I was going to school, you know, even though you're supposed to combine your debts, like, I don't think that's fair, that he needs to be responsible for my, you know, 20 grand in student loans, right. um, so, I mean, I have expenses, so it's not like, you know, I don't have things that, that I pay. I pay, I have bills, you know. Um, I just don't have, like, a, a housing expense that I have to pay. But as far as, like, bills, I have bills that he doesn't pay, that he that I feel aren't, aren't his responsibility, and they add up. It's a good amount of money. So See, we've been together, like, our entire adult lives, so my debt is his. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Now, you you only source it. See, see, I like, well, like retail herb. Um, I don't like having to clean anything. I don't like having to wipe somebody's nastiness off of things before I sell it. <laughs> I don't like yeah. want to deal with somebody else's ick. You I know, so that's another reason why I could never be, you know, more than ten percent on eBay. So most of, the, there are some things that I get that are for Amazon, like my books and things, I get those at the thrift store, and the VHS tapes and stuff like that, I get those at the thrift store all day long, but... Yeah, I'm going to have to talk to you one day and figure out what did you sell anyway, because like I said, like up until like 10 days ago, I didn't even know you did Amazon. I am a mystery. I know, you're like, just, I knew you sold <laughs> stuff, I didn't know what you sold or where. <laughs> um, I do... I like books. I like new VHS tapes. You guys would not even believe what you can make off of VHS tapes. Um, I do, like, talking Amazon. I do um, board games, toys. I don't really have a niche. I guess that's why I don't, I don't know, I guess that's why, I, you know, nobody really knows what I do because I, I will buy any just about anything, you know, that, that there's a profit on. Um, like air fresheners, um, candles. I've got like 97 pieces of makeup in front of me right now. Um, where it took me like, what, almost a year to get a beauty freaking approval. Um, God, what else is in my... I'm trying to think of what else is in my current shipment. 
Um, there's a set of mugs that's in there. Um, all kinds of stuff. It's like, I am one of those people that I don't mind scanning. I don't mind walking down the aisle and, you know, if something catches my eye or, you know, like at the at the Goodwill, if there's something, you know, in a box that lo that's new, I'll pick it up and scan it. I don't care what it is. Um, you know, like organization things, those binder, like you stick your folders in it on your desk, just anything. But eBay... It's like, it's funny, it's like what you started out doing. It's suits, ties, um, what else? That's been the bulk of what I've been doing, yeah, like men's you shirts. Can't make, you can't, like, make me, like, I have, okay, look. I, yeah, don't mind, I don't mind men's clothing. Women's clothing, I would rather virgin, poke my eyes out. This is a virgin wool Patagonia sport coat. Oh, see, I would have had that sold in, like, a day. I have had this for like six months. It hangs over there because I won't list clothes. But I couldn't not buy it. Like, because I knew I had Absolutely. to buy it. But I won't list it. Like, um, it's funny. Like, like I said, I would rather stab my eyes out with a hot poker than to sell women's clothing. Like, women <laughs> are nuts. You know what I mean? They're crazy. You know, you are nuts, Danica. And it's so, just so are you. But you know what I mean. Women are women are they're freaking crazy about their clothes and stuff. And I, I mean, you, chick, you ladies, I love you. You know, uh, you know, you guys know that. But you all know that you're psycho about your clothing. And one little thing that you don't like, you know, oh, this makes my hips look big, or you know, whatever. And it's a return. Not that big. That's not you know. I'm just I'm not. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, so about you know the, we're talking about sourcing and our methods of sourcing, but actually my method of sourcing is actually changing. Coming March, um, February, I have big plans for um, clearing out you know this stuff, getting it all listed. Probably February mm -hmm. is going to be. I'll probably list 150 things in February. With some people like I listed 150 things yesterday, but that's right. not me. Like I'm slow. Day. You know, like, I am a slow lister, and if I hit 10 in a day, I'm like, woohoo! So, right. uh, yeah, um, I have plans of 150 things, and it's 150 things only because a lot of it is parts, and parts are easy. Um, and then come March, my sourcing method is actually changing. I will be sourcing speedily. Um, like, I plan on hitting more stores per day and only spending... 20 to 30 minutes in each store. Um, because if I source that way, I tend to do less picking and pecking for stuff, like just pecking around for profits that are just kind of like, oh, my baby sell this, maybe. And, and really just end with more high profit items. And I also know that I'll pick up more FBA stuff that way. Because um, I've done that before when I, you know, several times I've gone into stores and I'm just like, I've got, you know, 30 minutes and that's it. And I'll leave with four things, but I'll leave with four great things, not 25 shitty things. You know? Right. So I'll have, basically the plan is to source faster and be more high quality items, higher profit items, um, and then basically increase my profits without increasing my workload. So that's coming in March. So my sourcing is actually totally changing here. Shortly. That is excellent. I am a there was I was they were making fun of me and how I say niche and not niche. <laughs> it's a niche, girl. I don't know what you're talking about, niche. but it is a niche. But yeah, when you get in the south, when you get in the south, it goes to niche. Rhymes with niche. other words, but right. Um, I was going to I was like, I took French. It's niche. That was like pounded totally in cool. my head. Like, Babe, I can't go on a show and go niche, and she's like. Yeah, you can, because that's how you pronounce it. And I'm like, okay. Whatever my you friend's say. teacher, like, pounded it in my head, and she's like, if it was pronounced properly, it would be niche. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a niche. And then you can tell her, well, you are a beesh. <laughs> no. She was awesome. <laughs> Madame Moulinex, I love you. I was listening to you guys while I was in the kitchen. I was being um, super dad and husband of the year. No, not really. 
but nobody else knew how to sear ahi tuna and cook <laughs> these giant shrimp. And my <laughs> wife's like, I'll screw it up. My food. So I'm like, babe, I got 25 minutes, and I'm just like running, running, running. And anyhow, I think it's good. I haven't eaten any, but it smelled really good while I was cooking it. So. Why did I was you eat? I was, Oh, they said huh? you're going on menopause, Dusty. That chick with the beard must be going on menopause. You should have eaten your food, oh, dude. The chick with the beard must be. <laughs> I'm really not even hungry. You know how when you cook and then you're like, I'm not. Yes. Hungry. It's, yeah, no, so. Plus, we didn't sesame oil. I didn't a little like sesame oil, and I don't. I like the taste of sesame oil. I just don't like the smell of it, and it makes me lose my appetite. Okay, okay hold on. So the guy on the show went and cooked his family dinner while no, the girl no, on the show was like, "Just no, go mark. Just go mark away. I got. I got, got the glass. The, moscato, the glass of moscato here. I got the ahi tuna going here. I got the iPhone going over here, listening to y'all, and I'm like, Shh. "You are a girl <laughs> in a man's body." <laughs> you know, my wife's. <laughs> why she married me, so no shame in my game. Your wife's like, I'm a lesbian, I'm married. There, there you <laughs> just confessed it live. Exactly. Lie. You just outed your wife, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, so, yeah, what were y'all talking about? Totally lost that, thanks. Uh, we were outsourcing and how it's changed and, like, apparently no one knows what I do. Um, Danica's like the oh. mystery seller. She, no, like, really... came in... I was thinking about that the other day, and I was like, you know, what does... I mean, not that everybody needs to know everybody's storefront and blah, 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 because there is that kind of yeah. weird... You know, you never know when somebody's going to go, I hate you. It's like Paul said on the morning show this morning, I hate you, and I'm going to go, like, blow your account up and just get you banned. And, I mean, right. you never know when that kind of stuff's going to happen, but no, I don't know a whole lot about you, and I will admit that, other than you, like, probably sell homeschooling books because you homeschool, and I'm assuming you probably sell the leftovers on there, but... Um, um, Caesar said, "Don't sneeze, Dusty." Don't sneeze. You know what? Caesar needs my phone number. He can text that to me directly. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I lost my train of thought again. So, right. um, <laughs> yes, I do sell homeschool books, but I—that's what I was trying to do. Total really quickly, you know, the things that are, the type of things that I sell. But I will sell anything really that will make me a buck. Well, I, I need a higher ROI than a buck, but you I'll know, it's anything. oh. Yeah, that's another thing we need to talk about, ROI. We'll do that on next week when we talk about profit. We will be talking week. about that next week on Profit Talk, ROI. Live. Oh, how to figure your ROI, people. What ROI to shoot for. Don't be yeah. going for this 20%. Or no percent. No like percent, percent. Negative 27%. <laughs> I've I been sold seeing them for that. five dollars, and then I had eight dollars in fees. I don't know what happened. Okay, so Dusty, how yes. do you do? Are do you only sell on Amazon now? I do. No, I still do eBay. It's um, you know, if you want to talk about sourcing and go back to the very beginning in the in the nutshell version, which I'm so wildly known for not being able to nutshell anything. Um, you know, when you go back to the beginning, I come down hard on people a lot of times on shows because I'm like, don't go out and buy. Like, there was somebody in Resellers today, and they're like, what about this little knick-knack thing, and they showed the bottom, and I'm like, don't do that. And if I come down hard, it's because I did that. When I started in 98 and I started doing eBay, it was just eBay back then, I thought, of course, back then you could sell anything on eBay. You know, there's a lot more competition now, but when it was, I would buy any... Any and every little whatever. I'd go into yard sale. Oh, my gosh, it's only a dollar. I can get six for it. That's great. I mean, and that's fine if you don't have limits on your account, if you don't have selling limits, if you don't have – if you have the time to list items to make a $3 net profit. a lot of time. But, mm -hmm. you know, when I, come, when I come down hard on those people, it's because I really sincerely – I mean, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be doing, you know, Reseller Society. I wouldn't be doing a lot of that stuff if I didn't genuinely care. I mean, I was – I've – We've been fortunate enough to have the ability to learn from our mistakes over the years, and I feel like I have an obligation to to you, at least share them, share my mistakes with other people, so they don't have to go through that crap. You have to be one of the most creditable people because a you are full time. You are ride or die. We got it. You know this is the way we're going to eat. You oh, know, do like, business. Yeah, it's and like you've been doing it for a long time. It's not a year or two. We got into eBay in 2012. You know, I mean, this has been a very long venture for you. So no, I think you're almost by far one of the most credible people I know when well, it comes you. to Amazon and eBay. 
No, and I and I try to live my life as a, as an open book for the you know for the most part. But you know, there's I'm not gonna lie. There's months where it's like you know, okay, I'll tell you right now, we rent our house, we don't own our house. Our kids are 14 and 16, and there's no sense in buying again right now. So we're better off to rent. Our rent is $800 a month. It's due on the first of the month, late by the fifth. Fortunately for me, our landlord is also our neighbor and my beer drinking buddy, and so he kind of overlooks if it's a little late. But there are months where it gets to the 29th or the 30th, and I literally look and I go, okay, Tristan, what are we going to do? We're going to have to mark down everything, and I will go into Markdown Manager and put everything 40%, 50% off, knowing I'll still make money because I have to come. It is. It's like you said. It's live or die. I have to come up with the rent or you know, our power company, for instance, I mean, they don't give a long leeway. They give two or three months, and most months I'm fine. But there are those months where it's really tight and you haven't worked as hard as you should have. And you look down, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, if I don't do this and Tristan doesn't join in with me and we do this together and list all this crap, the power gets shut off two weeks yeah. from now. You know, you, you live. You have the options that Danica and I do that, you know, well, I'm not, I can't work today, or if Danica doesn't feel well, or I just don't feel like it, mm -hmm. you know that, you know, you don't have that, I don't feel like it for a week or two, you know, because you don't feel like it, then you'll be feel like it, I don't got dinner. And, I, and, I, <laughs> and, I, and it's not that I'm, and it's not that I'm Superman, and I, I, I always feel really weird when I come on shows, because I think that people, I don't know, I've always been kind of self-conscious that people are going to go, oh, you're bragging, whatever else. No, it's not that I'm bragging, but when your back's against a wall, and they're going to shut your power off, or your rent's going to be late, or whatever else. I mean, you you do you pull yourself up from the bootstraps, and you do what you have to do, mm -hmm. and and you you buckle down and you look around. And you go, okay, those two storage totes that are sitting over there that are unlisted stuff. There's no reason that's rent money right there. That's forty items at twenty dollars a piece. That's rent money right there. I'm stupid for not listing those. Would I rather go get another job? No, I don't want to go back to work for anybody else. You know, it's um. But back to the sourcing. I didn't mean to get off subject, but and I appreciate that. It's all on subject. Lot, but we love you, Dusty. But, thank you. But um. <laughs> but you know, when I go back to the very beginning, I made a lot of mistakes. I mean, it was the late '90s, so yeah, I did Beanie Babies. I joke about it now. And I laugh about it, and I might poke fun at other sellers, but deep down inside, that's because I screwed up and I did that crap. You know, I, I my parents call me and go, "Hey, we got all these Beanie Babies we invested in." I'm like, "You invested in Beanie Babies, really? You couldn't find like, you know, back then, I don't know, Google stock or eBay stock or something." And it's just, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. We made a lot of mistakes from the beginning. I tried to, as far as how has my sourcing changed? Back then, I would, like I said, I would take any item I could find at a yard sale and I could flip for five. But when I look at myself, I fast forward now eight, 17, 18 years later, and if you ask me how has it changed, I have no problems, and I was talking about this today in the after show, after Paul's show, I have no problem walking into a, a yard sale or a thrift store today and spending 45 minutes scanning barcodes, looking things up, and walking back out empty-handed. Mm -hmm. Back in the first few years, I felt like, oh my gosh, I gotta make money. I gotta do something. Yeah, I, I, I felt like I failed somehow. And no, and and now I've realized that's not a failure when you walk in and you and you skip over those items, but you go to the next thrift store and you buy an item for a dollar that's worth a hundred. That's a success. So skip a store, find a hundred dollar profit. Skip a store, find a two hundred dollar profit. Whatever else. In the at the end of the day, when you go back home and you only have four items to list, that's a bigger that's a bigger profit. You know, a lot less work. Right. I I did. I felt in the beginning. You're absolutely right. Because you know, in the beginning, it was like I got nothing. You know, I, or you know, if if like I'm getting ready to leave and I'm like I have nothing. I need to get something, you know, and that's how you end up with all the stupid crap. I have You're enough stuff that, you know, if I leave a thrift store, which it's really rare that I do leave a store without something, um, it's not a it's not a failure. It, I mean, it's better because that means I didn't grab other crap that I didn't need that I, you know, would have spent my money on and then came out and been, well, what is this, and how am I going to sell this, and then two years from now it ends up on my curb on bulk pickup day. 
Yep. <laughs> so I don't source things anymore that I I don't I don't know that I I can't describe or I don't want to sell or I I don't want to you know. Like I said, if I have to clean somebody's nasty, I will clean it. I have happen. cleaned all kinds of yucky stuff. Mm -hmm. I have. I have no. I have no shame. It's not gonna happen. Shame. It yeah. might as well be dirty underwear. For, oh. me, for me to clean somebody's nasty, oh, like, poo -poo I'm serious, yeah. like somebody's nasty toaster, I don't know. It's I have cleaned foot funk, yeah. I have cleaned hair, oh, <laughs> no. cleaned nope. all kinds of yucky. It would have I... been in my backyard on fire. It's money, it's money. Come on, girl, it's money. No, that, <laughs> you, like, I've got a thing about feet. Feet are disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> just disgusting. You, you like you never like dropped see out. With you dropped out his like manicure skill, huh? Oh. <laughs> no. No. It will never, ever, ever happen. I will you will never see me sell a pair of shoes. Oh my gosh. About beanie babies over in the chat. Um I put a tub of beanie babies out on the curb yesterday. Like Did your daughter me, about that? Me and my, my, no, my daughter's not like that. Okay. Um, me and my dad actually back in 2005 uh, went sourcing Beanie Babies because his neighbor down the street sold his wife's Beanie Baby collection for like six figures. And so my dad, you know, decided we were going to be like Beanie Baby and heirs. And, um, we started going sourcing Beanie Babies, and I actually did some research, you know, I looked on eBay, and I sorted from, like, most expensive down, and I would write down names of ones that, you know, sold for a decent amount of, I was smart about it, but it really was more of a daughter-dad bonding experience that I got to go run around with my dad and look for Beanie Babies and thinking we were going to make some money. I never sold a single one of those things. They're, like, they're in a box. I think they're still like a hundred of them in a box somewhere that I couldn't find yesterday, but there was there was a a uh, 56 what 56 gallon yeah uh, plastic tub of Beanie Babies I put out on the curb yesterday. Question: Did they have tags on them? Yes, they did have tags on them. Did you look them up on Amazon? I did not because I did not sort through any of the stuff I took out of the shed yesterday. Good for there you. There was there was uh, stuff that could have been sold. But uh, I have no lack of unlisted inventory, if you would like to observe behind me here. Um, so if I would have sat there and gone through that stuff, it would still be in my shed. Well, I, and that, got rid of I applaud anything. you for not going through the stuff, because it, it, when you really want to get it out, the, that's the only way to do it. Is just I couldn't don't look even at look it. at it. I was yeah. just like, this, go. I mean, I looked through it to make sure it wasn't anything special. You know, like I didn't have like my daughter's baby pictures in there or something, but I don't have anything like that stored in the shed. But just to make sure mm -hmm. I wasn't getting rid of something important, I just kind of looked and went, okay, go, boom. Okay, look, yeah, that's go, go. I go. never would have thought to put a Beanie Baby on Amazon either. That's just, yeah, more, to me, Beanie Babies are dead. Like they're just. Well, here's the thing with Beanie Babies I actually sell them quite often. A lot of them will be uh, very low ranking, like. <laughs> Thousand. Are you doing my And the profit can be anywhere from two dollars to shit. Maybe. I mean, the highest one I've sold was like thirty dollars. My daughter just came That's around the that. corner and said, "You didn't tell me you had a whole tub of Beanie Babies. I could have gone through those." I told you. <laughs> Did I not say? <laughs> Yeah. What did your daughter say? Go away. They weren't hers anyway. They were mine. I bought those with my daddy. <laughs> so, Adam, when you first started, like, when when you first started selling online, was it eBay? No. Was it Amazon? No. Where did you first start selling? He was on 1-800-CALL-ADAM. What? What? Not <laughs> 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 Um, first, I got mainly into books. I one day decided to look up uh, sites that you can sell books directly to. Like so, the oh, okay. or 
you know, like those kind of ones. Sold books to third party sites, and that's how I got started. I did that for roughly a year. I got, I had contacts to get books for like nothing. So I did that for a year. Then I figured, hell, let's try Amazon. Because I, at first, I didn't really like the fees, but I mean, I made end up doing Amazon and making a lot more money. So, yeah. So do you do anything on eBay? I thought you did. Or do you just source from eBay? No, I buy, I sell on eBay. Let's see. What's an eBay product? Oh. We only got an hour show here, Adam. Let's go. Well, You're killing can't. me, dude. You're killing me. <laughs> my, rating, my ratings just went down. God. Yeah, I'm some <laughs> old prices that are going to eBay. Wow, really? <laughs> no, but I saw mainly anything. I do do a lot of, like, sunglasses. This is a pair of Oakley's. Really? On eBay? You do yeah. uh, sunglasses? Are you the I one never would have guessed that. If somebody would have uh -uh. given me an option of three things, and these three things Adam sell, and one of them was sunglasses, it, it, I would have lost. Never, uh, never, ever would I have guessed that. Yeah, and you can quit putting all those Ray-Ban ads in everybody's groups now. I know, right? <laughs> Stop making the fake yeah, profiles. <laughs> So how has your sourcing changed from when you first started? Do you still source books at all? Uh, garage sales, I'll look at them. Thrift stores, I'll glance at them. But typically, no books over here unless I get them for free. You know, it's funny. I think that people that are sellers are just always sellers. Like, when you were younger, did you do things that were entrepreneurial like that, that, you know, you were selling stuff? I remember being in elementary school and selling, like, salted Kool-Aid for, my, you know, two for 50 cents. My brother and I, in 1970, 79, 1980, took the leftover punks that you get from Fourth of July that you light your firework, firework punks, and dipped them in Aramis cologne and let them dry out and went door to door selling them as incense sticks. I mean, we didn't know what <laughs> incense it was. Then we, then, then we discovered these little furry balls with little stick on eyes and we started making these little people, whatever. We sold those door to door. We did lemonade stands. We did, um, at one point, my brother, he was older, he kind of became an ass, and he was like, no, you go door to door. I'll make the stuff. You go sell it. So here I am, like, seven years old, and I'm wandering around our neighborhood, like, selling, like, garbage, you know, just hoping people buy it so he didn't beat the crap out of me when I get back home. But Were you, like, I mean, selling telephones that were cans with strings? You know, like I mean, no, we would make money. Like, our lemonade stands, we would go out in, like, two or three hours, and this is, like, 1980. This is a lot. I mean, minimum wage was like three bucks an hour back then. We'd make like twenty dollars for like two or three hours worth of work. I don't know. I was being born. Old, so Dusty. yeah, okay. So Danica's old. Danica, help me out. I am. I am. I'm old. I'm not as old as Dusty, but I'm old. <laughs> wow. Where's Peyton? <laughs> I I have always Dusty doesn't have anybody to go after it. Right. Point. He's got nobody. Uh, You're the old one. Dusty, old Dusty. I've always had some type of something that I was doing. Like, I had all these business ideas when I was a kid, and, yeah, you know, I, when, like, I got, I got put on bed rest with my oldest kid. Well, I got put on bed rest with but I got put on bed rest with Brayden, and I, we were going to use cloth diapers, and I wanted those really cool things, you know, that the babies wore, but we were broke college kids, you know? We were living on a GI Bill and student loans and, you know, I didn't have $70 to spend on some cute little wool soaker, so I taught myself how to knit so that my kid could have these cute things, and then I started selling those cute things, you know, so I was the evil one charging these moms 100 bucks for a pair of pants that I made, you know, and then I did, what did I do after that? God, I don't know. I've had like 50 businesses that I've done. I think that people are entrepreneurial are, are kind of always that way. I mean, like I said, I mean, I was selling that salted Kool-Aid. So I was in, like, second grade. Um, you know how I was doing it, though? Okay, I had asthma. 
So I had a roto inhaler, which is little capsule peels, and then you twist it, and it breaks the capsules open. And so I would take the capsules, and I put the Kool-Aid inside. I was like a Kool-Aid drug pusher um, in, like, second grade. But nice. <laughs> I sold, like, because you're, like, Deb's dropping, like, in. white crosses in her Kool-Aid, selling them to the kids. <laughs> no, like, oh, like, when I was 10, I had a house cleaning business, which is so weird because I hate cleaning house. But I had a house cleaning business, and this lady hired me, and she would, like, pay me to clean her house. Um, and then I did a pet sitting business. I, like, pat, pat, sat. I pet sat, that's the word, pet set, um, the dogs, like, across the street, and, oh, shut up, Dusty. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, pet set the, the, like, the dogs across the street, and that was, like, when I was 10. So, I mean, I think business-minded people are just going to always business-minded. You know, I agree. We, I mean, we, I remember gambling. I'm not talking anymore because Dusty's making fun of me. <laughs> I remember <laughs> talking about oh, yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to say we gambled on the school bus when I was a kid, but then it, then it kind of went from there, and my brother decided to have UNO tournaments. Because Uno had just come out, we decided to have Uno tournaments, which was actually gambling, and he won everybody's lunch money for like every day for two weeks consecutive, until the principal of the school found out. And we got called in the office, but um, then we went from there. Dad, my dad was a was a vice president of a chain of grocery stores out in the Midwest, and so he had access to um, you know the wholesale products before they came out. And this was 1987. and I, I collected baseball cards, and one day my dad goes, "Hey, you know those new baseball cards that are coming out?" And every everybody back then waited on the like, spring release or whatever it was, whatever season um, of the 1987 Tops and Fleer cards and all that. And my dad goes, "You know, we've got those in the warehouse. They're not supposed to come out for two more weeks." And I was like, "Really?" And my dad, my own father put in a purchase order under his own name and bought like 10 cases of them with the agreement that we would pay him back. And my brother and I went to the little local civic center there in, <laughs> in Joplin, Missouri, and rented out a spot at the baseball card show that was coming. And, of course, those cards weren't released for two or three more weeks. We were the only people. We weren't baseball card dealers. We were just two kids sitting up a table selling our baseball cards. We were the only dealers there out of like 150 dealers that had the brand new not released baseball cards. And back then baseball cards were like 35 cents a pack. Well, we were selling them for $2 a pack. You know, well you can't get them anywhere else. You know, and we were paying 20 cents a pack. So we literally we did a two day a two day weekend thing. And I think, you know, now that I'm glad you asked that question, now that I look back, there's starts way back in my childhood to I bet you everybody has a story. I bet resell now. Yeah. I bet you everybody in the audience, every person that's an eBay or Amazon person has a childhood business. Oh, you I know, see that it. wasn't your typical lemonade stand. It was, you know, cool. Well, Alberto said that he, <laughs> he you know, did lemonade and, and shoveled snow in the winter and raked he leaves. He did lemonade snow. Lemonade snow. Wow. That's another show. <laughs> That is another show altogether. So do you guys, okay, going back to sourcing, do you guys think that you're sourcing, do you think that you're there? Like, do you think that you've found your sweet spot, or do you think that you'll just, do you think you'll you'll need to continue tweaking it? I think, if I, go ahead. I think for me, and that was something I did want to bring up, I think for me, I definitely have, and I used to look back, and, and I used to look at other people you know, the Chris Greens and the, I don't know, all the big name people, the Jordan Malix or I don't know, whoever they are all out there. I used to look back and I'm like, wow, must be nice. And I think it's really, for me, it's come about in the last two years where I finally, but like I said, it took me eight to 17, 18 years to get here. It's finally, for me, come to where I have the relationships. You know, my, my, my sourcing isn't all about going to a thrift store or going to a yard sale, although those those skills have been honed, definitely. I'm not reading the side chat because I see y'all grinning, so it's I'm probably Adam. not Sorry. looking there. Um, you know, but I look... But I, but I look now, and I have, I now have these relationships that everybody, everybody wants to find a wholesaler. Everybody wants to find a liquidator. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to for the last five, six years 
And finally, two years ago, I found a guy that was buying returns pallets. And it was kind of like, eh, well, it's returns, and you know, you'll get dings and this and that and the other. And and that, but that kind of blossomed into something else with a couple other liquid. And now I'm kind of finally to the point where I'm like, wow. So that's how these people did it. It wasn't that you had a magic secret formula and you had a website or you had somebody to tell you, hey, go here and buy this. Mm -hmm. I've got friends like Adam or I've got, you know, other people. I've got like 20, 30 people that'll text me or message me and, and say, hey, here's a bolo on this or here's a bolo on that, you know, and I'll share a bolo back with them. It's all about networking. Oh, it's absolutely. Really, really, for me, it took me it took me the 15 years of the 18 years. I'm not going to say I didn't do, didn't do it in the first few years, but it took me that long to get to the point of where of, of where I, I what's it, Deb, are you okay? Yes! <laughs> It took me, anyhow, it took me in, in a nutshell, it took me it took me that long to get to the point where I, I finally established long term relationships with real people where I could find those kind of deals. Dad, what's going on? You I don't just hold a piece of paper on my floor. <laughs> just peed, was it on one of your I heard some shuffling and so I turned around and he just like took a squat on my paper on my floor. Wow. Deb's dog does not appreciate our conversation. <laughs> He's like, piss on this. <laughs> but I completely agree with you about the that it's networking. You've got to, you've got to get, you know, and like you said, even in these groups, the, the things that we're doing and the relationships that we're forming, we're setting up our own little network, you know, and... You are, and it doesn't have to be with a wholesaler. I no. mean, Morning. This morning, there were two boxes behind me. Both of those two boxes were going. Well, Adam's one of them. I'm not going to say who the other one was. We're going to two different other resellers. And in exchange, I did some trading with Adam, and he sent me a. He sent me this nifty little thing that that Trent that takes 35 millimeter slides and converts them to. He's like, oh, I've got one of those. And I'm like, dude, I really want one. He's like, well, it's been sitting on FBA for a long time. And so I said, well, what do you want? And he goes, well, I want that other stuff you have that you mentioned in your haul video. Mm -hmm. And we just did some trading. And at the end of the day, I ended up with something I want. It's just it's just, yep. just networking. It's just. You know, uh, there was somebody in one of the groups that asked a question about something. And it was some crafty item. And she had no clue about it. And I, you know, I told her, I said, well, this is what it is. This is what it's for, you know, and I said, if you were closer, I could test it for you because I have the machine that it's for. And she messages me, and she's like, just give me your address. She's like, I'm sick of looking at them. I'm sick of dealing with it. I'm just going to mail them to you, and you can sell them. And I was like, no, look, look, you know, you can sell them for this. And I made over 100 bucks off of those things that that woman sent me. You I know? have done that. I, I have shipped things people. to people. Yeah. I have shipped things to people because I didn't want to sell them, and I knew that that was their specialty. And I was you know, just trying to be nice to her. I was like, I was just trying to help you. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying it's to not that. Don't, stuff. Don't, yeah, you know? no, don't feel guilty. It's not that because I know I have sent things to people. I yeah. sent boxes across stitch. I've sent clothes. I've sent. Um, there was another thing, another box of stuff I sent, I can't remember. I have sent off stuff just because I knew it wasn't my specialty. I wasn't going to list it. It was going to end up donated, mm -hmm. you know, and I boxed it up and sent it off. I'm, try I'm like, in the, like, pass it forward stage right now. Like, I'm just really digging helping people. You know, I'm comfortable where I'm at right now, and I'm, I'm good, you know. I'm fine. I'm still. I uh, I you really know. specialize in money, Danica. If you well, want to just no. box up some and ship it over, I would like. Yeah, I'll you talk take to care John, of it. Cause like, I will, I will take care of it. Because I'm just the girl, and I can't handle all the big money. Uh, yeah, it's so hard, you girl. <laughs> hey, Adam, what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Adam, are you comfortable where you are, or do you think that you need to continue evolving your sourcing? I need to do a lot of everything. Adam, you're you're currently changing your sourcing, aren't you? I mean, aren't you doing a lot more online arbitrage now than you uh, used to? No, I mean, I've been in it a little bit more and more and more, but no, I still do the same old crap. Do you want to go to more 
online sourcing? Like, would you be happy if you were 95% online or? Um, I don't know. I mean, I love getting out. I love going to the stores. I like going to thrift stores. I know that thrift stores actually miss me, so I guess I should They're really sending him postcards. Right. <laughs> How much of your sourcing right now is online, Adam? Um, 2015, I'd say... Um, Let's clarify, that's the last 26 days. <laughs> she make it seem like, oh, oh all is done. Maybe 5, 40%. So already this year, you're up to 35 to 40% online already? I haven't done much this year. I've yeah, but that's... That's a well, large I person. saw you in December running around like a fool at every single retail location. I don't remember seeing you at all sitting on your computer doing online arbitrage. How much? Yeah, how much last year? Out of out of all of last year, how much was online arb? Mm, very little. I did a little here, a little there. I just figured I I was supposed to be working on eBay stuff, so I figured. I'll buy stuff from eBay, sell to Amazon, but I haven't got much done for eBay like I wanted to. So see, I'm with you. I thought that I should be selling on eBay. Like I, 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 I don't know why. You know, it's like, oh, I see this stuff that could be sold on eBay. I should start doing eBay. And it's like, why, why, why did I do that? Well, I think the thing is, is find what you want to do. And it's just like I keep saying, I'm not going to be that person that runs to all the stores. It doesn't matter what it is that you're saying is there. I'm I'm not going to do it. And I think if I forced myself to be that person and go into a type of business or a type of sourcing that I don't want to do, I would end up being miserable. Like if somebody was like, okay, you can't go to Goodwill anymore. You have to only get your stuff at Target and Toys R Us. Yeah. Like... I, I probably just, I would just quit. You know, I would just, like, I'm going to find something else to do, you know, because... I, I don't mind, do like, I don't mind going to Target and scanning stuff. Like, to me, it's kind of like a hunt. It's like... I like going to stores that people you know, aren't sourcing at. I, I like going to stores that aren't Target, Walmart, Big Lots. Hey, you know, your, your daughter's hey, behind you. Deb, there's a small child behind you. I'm ignoring her. She, she doesn't look happy. She's picking up. Hi. <laughs> Are you angry? <laughs> Your mummy threw out all those beanie babies. So. Oh, my God. She just came to ask me where she should put this so the dog <laughs> don't get it. Is that 11, 11 by 17 paper? It that sure is, as heck is. That is huge. What do you use 11 by 17 for? She draws on it so she doesn't steal my paper. Oh, I thought it was for your printer. I was like, is that for your yeah. packing slips? <laughs> what kind of book do you have on your packing slip? No, I bought this for two ninety nine at Goodwill. Wow. So she could color on it and stop stealing my paper. Oh, I buy every ream of paper I come across. Just yep. if it's cheap enough. cheaper than Walmart, I buy it. Yep, we've got those big... We've got one that's like four foot tall. Like a, It's like a four foot tall ream of paper, and Gavin's like... <laughs> But, you know, oh, I think, you know, she was talking about, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that kind of sourcing. Hey, I mean, I, I think. Can hear, I can hear you. My sourcing. <laughs> my, no, I agree. I'm agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Make so, it that's fine. My, that's fine. My, my, uh, my sourcing has morphed over the years. I mean, it really, if if I, if I all of a sudden, you know, like fourth quarter, I go, wow, the money's in. And, and y'all make fun of me for this on every single show, but it's in Vagisil and Tampax and adult diapers, you know, Depends and Poise. I mean, I don't care. I'll chase Depends and Poise and Vagisil. and he knows his market. You know, the, you know, I know more about women's products than I ever should, but, you know, I'll chase that until the cows come home. And then when I see that market starting to dry up and and I'm going to my liquidators, I'm not dry up. That was, oh, my God. <laughs> But I see, I see, I see that Marcus. You promised we were not going to be the toe cast. Starting to shrink. That's probably not good either. I see that Marcus starting to, to go bye bye and get wings. Yes. <laughs> Fly away. So anyhow, um, 
then I go then I go back into eBay mode and I go okay yard sales or go to the thrift store and look for eBay stuff and okay this is what I need to do to make money until the next deals come along from the liquidator or come across something I mean you just really it's all about flexibility it's all about not being I mean don't walk into a thrift store and because you've watched all these YouTube videos you think oh my gosh I gotta buy Robert Graham shirts and coffee mugs I mean if you do that you literally limit yourself to, and I'm not bashing those two items, but you know that's two of the commonly mentioned items. And I, look, and I want to look at people, and I'm like, but how many other items did you walk past? You know, you walk past that box of tampons, and who really? Cares? Oh my God, vintage, like vintage, like vintage, like 1990s vintage and earlier of um, feminine hygiene products. Oh my goodness, crazy like, money! I have sold. Maxi pads I got from an estate sale, and I don't even go to estate sales, but the second one I went to had them there. And I found a box of Kotex from like 1994 at a thrift store and totally mm -hmm. sold them for like $70. Well, okay, so if you guys could tell people one place that they should source that you, you like, some like, well, I don't even know if it should be one place. If you can help people change one thing about their sourcing, like the things that you see in the group all the time, you know, like, hey, who's got the bolo lists? You know, what should I look for for this? What should I look for? You know what I mean? If you could tell them one thing about their sourcing that you wish you knew in the beginning, what would it be? Don't buy things you can't describe. Exactly. Don't buy something just because it's cute. And I, I saw it, and then. I saw a prime example of that tonight in the Reseller Society. Somebody posted, and I hope he's not out there, and I don't mean it bad, but posted a fork and a spoon, and they're made out of wood, and they were painted and whatever else. I avoid stuff like that because my immediate thought is when I look at it, I go, okay, vintage wooden painted fork spoon. I'm going to be lost in a sea of Cassini, a sea of search terms. How is anybody ever going to find me? There's no brand name on it. There's wow! No, there's no, exactly. No, it Vintage wasn't. Vintage wood, fork and spoon, painted, no name. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you could put, but, but you've, there you've got zebra print going on or whatever, you know. But theirs were just, I mean, and they were neat and they were vintage, but I was like, nobody's ever going to find that item. I mean, I don't know in a nice way to say nobody's ever going to find that because if somebody goes, oh, I want some vintage wooden spoons, eBay, vintage wooden spoons, and yeah. they're going to pull up 7,000 items, they're never going to find you. Don't don't buy things you can't describe that, you know, I mean, I see, I, that's one thing I see so much. The people come, and they've got pictures of it, and they've already bought it, and they're like, what is this? How do I describe this? And I'm like, brown bear. You know, and you're like, what? There's no name. There's nothing special about it. It's a brown bear. You know? To me, it would be don't feel like you're a failure when you go out sourcing and you're like in a store. Yeah, don't feel like you're a failure failure if you leave with nothing. It's perfectly yeah. fine to leave with not a single thing in your hands. That just means that there was nothing there worth purchasing that you know about. I mean, and you were picky. You weren't going to yes. come home with something that Be you can't picky. describe or make money on. And, yes. and, learned, and learned to look at it this way. I just avoided losing money. I just Absolutely. avoided doing what Deb had to do, or I had to do at a yard sale three months ago, where you literally throw out boxes of stuff. Not that you lost money. In my in my case, at the yard sale, at least I sold it and got some of my money back. Or you donate, or, or you do lose money. You avoided losing money. You walked in and out, zero spent. It was, what, an hour or two of your time? Big deal. Yeah. You know, the sad part about the stuff I put out by the curb is that I know there is somebody today buying, like, that exact same stuff. You know, they've got that coffee house. cup in their hand going, oh, this is cool, and take it up like I did and buy it. And it's like... Caesar said, don't buy an item that you can't ship. Amen. Uh, hence my canister set. Adam, what would you tell people? Like, what would you go back and tell yourself, right? You know, Adam, today, what would you go back and tell yourself about sourcing, you know, to wee little Adam back when you first started? Other than, other than beanie babies. I would just tell them not to get into this crap. It's so addicting. 
It is addictive. It's addictive, as as Adam smiles all the way to the bank. Right. But, you know, I agree with... I agree with Caesar. Um, don't buy an item that you can't ship. Yeah. Somebody in re and I hate to keep going back to reseller society, but I'm not gonna lie. What's well, a big group? Don't it's one that we're all in. in reseller society if you don't want Dusty talking about on the show. No, it's because I, 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 did, I didn't want to be on Facebook. I got off of it for four years, and I had to join because resellers did the Facebook thing, and so I've kind of limited myself to how many groups so I don't waste my entire day. Not that it's a waste, you know what I mean, but. I've, I've kind of, that's one group I'm active in, and I've just kind of been selective so that I get actually am productive and get work done. But anyhow, somebody posted in there the other day, and they said, what do you think about this this picture? Who is it? And I'm like, oh, it's Dave Matthews Band. And then I start looking, I'm like, how big is, I don't remember if I asked how big it was, or they said how big it was, and it was like, you know, two feet by two and a half feet. And I was like, well, my first thought, they said, should I buy it or not? My first thought was, do you have a box big enough to ship it in? Because yeah. if not, then you just created a problem of going to U-Haul, getting a picture frame box, or paying an overpriced UPS store to ship it, You've cre or scrounging around and making something out of cardboard that looks like it came out of Transformers and is probably going to arrive broken. I mean, is it really worth it to make $10? Mm -hmm. You know, I have a picture in a frame sitting in my shed. From It's a vintage Motorola framed picture from Motorola when Motorola used to be in Austin. It's amazing. It's awesome. Somebody's going to love it in Chat. my shed because I can't list it and ship it. Like, I don't know. It's, you know, like, it's just in there. Chat will buy it for me. It's Absolutely. awesome. It's, like, from, like, the 80s or early 90s, and it's, like, the face of, like, it's, it's awesome. He would he would love that. Or Eric or somebody like that, yeah. Okay, that's it, guys. That no, is all the time we've got for today. <laughs> is this like Christmas with my, is this like Christmas with with my mother when she goes, Okay, love you, bye. Click. Love you. <laughs> now, um next week bye. I think we're going to we're gonna well, I don't think next week we're gonna talk about um ROI, how to calculate it, um, what it is, what it means. And making sure that you are actually making a profit after all of your fees and things like that. Um, not, how to not screw yourself. Not selling things for $5 on FBA. Yes. Thank you, Caesar, for that idea. Um, but, yeah, that, that we is... We lie you. We lie you. That is a big... <laughs> that is a big thing because there are so... You know, we, we see that all the time. You know, I, I'm losing money. How am I losing money? So we're going to talk about that next week. So Fine. don't forget to, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube crap that people say. I thought you were. I thought you and Deb were talking about bitcoins next week. Um, Every day. I did. I went there. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I'm don't never... forget, there's no um, reseller wake up tomorrow, guys. Um, we'll be back to Wednesday. There That's maybe why we need to do the show like all night and through the morning. They're making emergency what? There may be an emergency one. Um, look at the reseller wake up to check. Paul. Paul has a good topic. That's all I can say. What? What did I mean? What is it? Just say what Paul, the you didn't is. message me and tell me this stuff. You didn't mean what? to tell us that. He never told he has me. an issue right? with basically someone cleared out his PayPal account. And the card attached to it. What? So. No way. Good. What? Think about that tomorrow. If not, it will be Friday's topic. I thought Wednesday. he went to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wednesday. Yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, yeah. Wait, what? Were you so, not supposed to say that, Adam? Am I supposed to say what? He said he po it was posted in the group. What just went out forever and ever on the worldwide interwebs. It was posted in the uh, reseller wake up. You thought our outro last week was long. Now everybody, <laughs> everybody's like, <laughs> way to go, Adam. Everybody, oh, okay. I completely missed the Paul post. Well, I was trying you know, to. Pay that's attention. a good example. I'm just reading it briefly. That's a good example of how to have a backup plan. You know. That sucks. Wow. Okay. 
Okay, guys. Okay, well, bye. I'm just kidding. Love ya. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, so perhaps tomorrow, probably Wednesday. We'll see you guys Wednesday morning, and we'll be back next week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bitcoin.